To State of the Nation, the United Nations has recognized 26 June as the International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking. The observance of the day is an important initiative to ensure sustainable development globally and to advocate for measures to tackle drug abuse and trafficking. Now we know this, drug trafficking is a major challenge across the world, especially in developing countries like Nigeria, in nations where poorer people are desperate for monetary stability and security is lax they are likely to fall prey to this network of crime it was discovered that in nigeria between the ages of 15 and 64 about 15 million use drugs in terms of prevalence according to the geopolitical zones it turns out that the southwest is about 22 percent as far as drug use is concerned followed by the south south which is about 17 percent now the president muhammad buhari said that the issue of drug abuse should be tackled directly by setting up a committee to bring recommendations on the best and urgent steps that should be taken. We're now being joined from Abuja studios by Inalego Ame. He's the deputy commander of narcotics in charge of rehabilitation. We want to thank you so much indeed for joining us. Where should we start this war or efforts, if you will, to contain drug abuse now that we're celebrating the International uh, Day of uh, Drug Abuse in Nigeria? Thank you, Gimba, and good evening, Nigerians. It's a privilege to be part of the campaign to sensitize Nigerians and the world in general on the scourge and the menace of illicit drug trafficking and abuse. What is the way? What direction? Like you rightly said, from the household survey reports, it is said that about 14.3 Nigeria, million Nigerians are users of drugs. Compared to the international statistics, the world statistics has it about 5.6%. So if Nigeria, if the whole population of the world that are involved in drug use is about 5.6%, and Nigeria has about, like you said, 15 million people doing drugs, that is quite challenging. And so it, it, it calls for a multi-dimensional approach a multidisciplinary approach to ensuring that this menace is drastically brought to a standstill. And uh, for, for us in the NDLEA, in line with this year's theme, which says health for justice and justice for health, we have embarked on a multi stakeholder mobilization. Prior to this, Celebrations of this day usually will be gathered daily, uh, probably in the, in the grand finale, and talk about what the trend is like. But this time around, the scope has been stretched all the way to the grassroots. We, if I may button, week, we'll if I may button, I just, I'm just wondering, uh, out of all you have said, I'm just wondering if yeah. the um, measures are really working despite all the committees that you're going to set up, the figures are still climbing. It's 15 million users today. So many people are, are quick to draw conclusions as to whether the measures are working. But it depends on the assets they are using. And like I tell people, that the presence of a security officer alone is a deterrence. For us in NGLEA, we have adopted the multi-approach of checking the supply, by way of operations and arrest. We have also increased uh, our involvement in what we now regard as the drug demand reduction activities. And so it's, it's, it's a balanced approach. Seizures have been made, prosecutions have been done. In the same way, we have uh, identified that people who use drugs should have their own treatment in a way that we refer to as a, a health response. By way of that, NDLA offices across the nation are rendering services in counseling, in rehabilitation, in referrals to treatment centers. We are collaborating with health and social service institutions to ensure that everybody that is involved, either by way of trafficking or dealing, when you're involved in dealing and trafficking, of course, criminal justice system allows us to prosecute you, but we are not putting everybody in the same basket. This time around, people who are doing drugs, people who are using drugs, 
are given the special treatment of being a, 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 a opportunity of treatment, allow them to go to hospitals, allow them to receive counseling and rehabilitation, and in liaison with employers like uh, the NDE, but, but, some of them but are getting it, trainings it, and My apologies. And so, for I'm just really concerned because this figure keeps uh, going up. Are you and they are the people you're in partnership with to try to contain this, Coach, are you overburdened? Are you overwhelmed? If, 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 40, if, if over 40 million Nigerians are involved, then it's, it's overwhelming. Then it's worrisome. Then it's, uh, it's, it's caring. So let, let me get you your thoughts at, then. Let me get your thoughts about this, this, like, this uh, uh, other views to um, uh, the signals that, that I'm getting. The Almagiri syndrome, if you do remember just uh, last week, the NSA came out to say that we must be able to do something about the Almagiris, especially in the northern part of the country. Now, they constitute 10 million of the out-of-school children. That is 13 million. What can be done by your agency to try to see that we are able to control that figure, perhaps bring down the number of out-of-school children, which seems to be, uh, a, a, there seems to be a relationship with uh, some, um, some level of drug use and getting, preventing the children from being in school? Thank you very much, we, we have identified this challenge as a battle that, only NDLA cannot win. And so it calls for collaboration. For us, we're already working with some NGOs and civil society organizations to identify. We, we just did a proposal on how one of those centers in Kano can be sanitized. We have put in place a proposal to see, do a register of these people in most of these centers, in most of these Almagiri centers. Know those of them who have fallen out because of the inability to go to school, be able to sort them out. We agree that if over 10 million children are out of school and undergoing the challenges of Almanjari and caring for themselves, of course, it becomes a buffer zone for the involvement in not just crime, I mean, not just drug use, but other crime and criminalities. We identify that, and like I said, we are working with organizations, we are working with NGOs to ensure that uh, alternatives are made available Actually, that is a part of the team for this year's uh, celebration. The possibility let, let, let me get, of just before we let you go, just before we let you go, because uh, we're, we're actually running out of time. Let me get this as your final words. Between uh, sweet okay. codeine and um, uh, marijuana, as well as um, uh, yeah. uh, what's the other, uh, the, the last drug? Now, I think they, they have a gradation. Uh, which one is more proliferated in Nigeria? No, cannabis, cannabis sativa remains number one, and it, it's not unconnected with the fact Do that... Do you support that some state governments countries. should go ahead uh, growing yeah. cannabis? cannabis? Cannabis is grown in several states of Nigeria, and uh, because of that, it's readily available. And so if you, if you are talking about prevalence of drugs in Nigeria, cannabis remains number one. That's why we're talking about the Igbo or the Wiwi. That's a good place to let like you rest, said, Mr. Inalegu Ame, the Deputy Commander of Narcotics in charge of rehabilitation. I'm afraid that that's the much we can take on the show, but I must thank you so much indeed for sharing your thoughts with us on the, uh, trying to thank curtail you. the use of and abuse of illicit drugs. And to you for being a part of the show, many thanks indeed for watching. I am Gimba Umar, and this is State of the Nation. Thank you.